everybody! Um, today we're going to go over my Animazement cosplay and review! I've been going to Animazement for the past nine years. Next year will be my 10th year, 2018. Um, and oh my gosh, this year was pretty great. Um, just to start things off, I just wanted to go over my personal costume that I got to wear. I was Dr. Mrs. the Monarch with wings. Um, they were fun to like throw around and stuff. This costume took me maybe three days to make, mainly because I was lacking motivation <laughs> to get it done, unlike my other costumes in previous years. Um, it was pretty simple, just a bodysuit and some wings and some accessories. Um, a lot of people seemed to like the fact that I was walking around with my natural hair. Um, I mean, like, I would have gotten a wig, it's just that it's, in, it's Memorial Day weekend and it's, like, really hot. So I didn't really want to like sweat all day long, so I just didn't wear it. But it was really nice to hear that people really liked the fact that I was like wearing a fro with a costume. Like, okay, thanks. <laughs> um, so this is one of the costumes that I wore. Um, later in the day I changed into like a more casual outfit. Um, so as you saw earlier, um, I took a lot of videos of like, a lot of pictures and videos of some of my favorite costumes that I saw on Saturday. And just so you know, my favorite costume was Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask. I'm not sure um, who they are, where they came from, if they're from North Carolina, but oh my gosh, they were the cutest couple ever! A few days ago, I asked you guys to submit your favorite photos from the con via the Animazement Facebook group. Some of my personal favorites that you guys submitted were this My Hero Academia group shot submitted by Jennifer, this adorable Moana family group photo submitted by EJ, and last but not least, this Orin High School Host Club group submitted by Mary. So I know that in my last video, um, I was talking about how I'm going to go to the masquerade contest. I'm going to die if I don't go to the costume contest. Well, I was having so much fun at Animazement, I actually forgot to go. But, however, I did find out that with the masquerade contest, apparently they were doing a live stream, which was pretty cool. Um, later on in the day, I got to go to the dance, like way late at night. I got to go to the anime dance, 
which was pretty fun. I haven't been since my very first year in 2008. And oh my god! <laughs> there was a lot of dancing. I was pretty sore the next day. Um, so, funny story. My cousin and I, we were in line to get some water. And so, like, we got in, we got, we got our cups of water, started moving to the side so other people can get some water. Next thing I know, like, I can't find my cousin. I'm like, where'd she go? I was like, where'd she go? What is she doing? Why is she goofing off? Saw this person in the floor. And I was like, oh my god, you need to get your stuff together. Like, chill, it's just a dance. Found out my cousin had fallen on the floor because there was like this giant puddle of water, like right in, next to the water station. And like, it was disgusting. Like there were cups, there's trash, it was like, it was overflowing of nast. And like, so my, my cousin was just like laying on the floor. She hit herself pretty hard. Um, coming back, like she had, um, her entire side was hurting, her elbow was inflamed, her knees were inflamed, like, it was bad. And so, like, people were, were constantly like, oh my god, are you okay? And I was like, who is this person in the floor dying? <laughs> and then I found out it was my cousin, and I was like, oh crap, did you hit your head? Please don't tell me you hit your head. So, as you can imagine, like, I drove back home that night. Um... But surprisingly, like, security didn't clean up the water until after she fell. They didn't even have, like, cones or anything at all until after the fact. So, considering that that was a serious safety, ha safety hazard, safety violation, um, and she could have sued because they didn't, like, because they threw caution to the wind, um, I would suggest that maybe, you know, if you see something going on, fix it. <laughs> but, um, I, the staff seemed really nice this year. They were really, really accommodating. However, there is some scandal or whatnot going on in Animazement. I personally did not see it, therefore I don't really have much to comment on it, but Apparently there was an Eric Vale controversy, and from just from what I've seen, read on the internet, I wasn't there, um, but apparently Eric Vale had lost his badge, um, and he handled it poorly, and Amazement staff handled it poorly, um, security was involved, and that's all I really know, because I wasn't there, I didn't have first-hand accounts, so I can't really give you guys any anything more than that. So apparently that happened and Eric Vale will no longer be coming to Animazement. Um, for those of you who don't know who Eric Vale is, his, from my personal experience, his most popular role was Edward El Elric from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Um, and, and I think, I think he also voices some character in My Hero Academia, the dubbed version of course. So there's that. So people wanted their stuff autographed and he wasn't there because he didn't have a badge. But, you know, that happens. It happens. Um, but considering all, all the good things that happened, Artist Alley was lit this year. Like, I, we only spent maybe like an hour or two in the dealer's room, didn't get anything. Okay, but Artist Alley, that's where I spent all my money. Like, oh my god, you guys, I spent all my money in the Artist Alley. Which, there's nothing wrong with supporting, like, small artists and stuff. But, oh my god, like, I was expecting to spend most of my money in the dealer's room. <laughs> which, I mean, granted, I've been going to conventions for 10 years. Almost 10 years. And I can tell you, like, anything you buy in the dealer's room, you can buy online for $10 cheaper. Um, but I thought it was pretty cool. They had a, they catered to a lot of, um, a lot of fandoms in the artist alley. There were 
a lot of really cool artists, very talented people. I, if you ever get a chance to go to Animacements Artist Alley, please, please go. Because this year, if they continue to get really quality artists, oh my gosh, because I can tell you, the first time I went in 2008, not dissing any of the artists, but their quality has definitely risen. <laughs> And with that, I want to show you guys my haul! Okay, first up we have this beautiful Cardcaptor Sakura poster. Um, unfortunately, the artist never gave me her, her contact information nor a business card, so I cannot tell you guys who did this artwork, but if you know who, please let me know because I really want to give her credit. Um, this was the very first thing that I bought in the Artist Alley, and oh my god, as you can see, um, it fuels my lifestyle card capture Sakura fangirl. Um, it's based. This particular work is based on the second opening, um, Tobira o Akete, also known as Dreaming by Anza. Um, as you can see, like the colors are just so pretty. Look at the blue and the orange and the yellow, and it just all works together in a beautiful harmony. This is the second item that I bought. It's a Jotaro Kujo and Star Platinum poster from Octostar Creations. Uh, this artist was really nice to me when I walked up. Um, I'm really, really, really pleased with like the colors and everything. And if, unless you can't see it, uh, this poster is holographic. I'm not sure if you can see that very well. But it's holographic and I love how in the background there's a faded um, aura in the back if you can see it um, which is what Star Platinum says every time he punches. Uh, for those of you who don't know uh, Jotaro Kujo is one of the Jojos from part 3 of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. This particular piece unfortunately again I don't have a business card but she did sign it here at the bottom um, but unfortunately she just put her initials so I can't particularly backtrack. Um, with this particular piece, I loved the colors in it. I loved how it like fades from green to a dark purple, and I liked all the detail in this. That's what really drew me to this particular piece. These two pieces, again, I don't have the artist information because I didn't get um, business cards or anything like that, unfortunately. But as I said earlier, I am a Carcaptor Sakura fan, but that also includes anybody named Sakura. Uh, from Car from uh, Street Fighter, Sakura is my main and I absolutely adore her. With this particular um, artist's art style, I absolutely adore it. Like, like, look how cute it is. It's like somewhat chibi, but not really. And I love how like everything's so cartoony and, so and very... I guess you could say it looks very, like, kill-a-kill-ish, and I like it very, very much. These three pieces were from the artist Atlasner. Um, I had personally never seen her before at Animazement, however, like, she easily stole my heart. Like, her art style and how nice she was, like easily made her my favorite artist to this year at Artist Alley. Um, and of course I have Car Captor Sakura because she had her and I really liked her Junko uh, art, fan art because I just love how obscene I guess you could say. I loved how obscene it was. And of course I got a, uh, a water type badge because I am a water type trainer because that is my life. Even though I didn't buy anything from Mako Fufu this year, um, I do want to say that she's one of my absolute favorite artists. Um, I typically buy something from her every convention that she's at, and trust me, in North Carolina she's at every single anime convention you can think of. Um, just a little known fact, if you ever pick up one of her business cards, just remember that it's actually a sticker. That's right, it's actually a sticker. Um, she's had three business cards I believe um, and one day I would happen to be like messing around with it looking around on her website and then all of a sudden the corner came off and I was like oh my god this thing is a sticker 
And last but not least, um, my cousin, she is making these awesome phone cases. And as you can see, um, she was kind enough to make me a custom phone case that was based on Dr. And Mrs. the Monarch. It's based on the Guild of Calamitous Intent, and as you can see, like, it's very sinister. It looks like it has blood and stuff. It has a nail. It has a knife. Um, it's really cute. She makes them herself, um, and if you would like, uh, she goes by Contaminated Minds on, on both uh, Instagram and Facebook. So if you don't mind just hollering at her, give her a like, and she can easily make you something just as cool. So please just go over there and check her out. Alright guys, uh, sorry for the quick costume change um, from the materials that I used to make the costume. It gets kind of toasty, that and I realized after uh, turning off the camera that I realized I um, had a bit of battle damage from walking around all day. Um, but that's the end of my video. I hope you guys enjoy. Um, I obviously will try and go to more conventions over the course of the summer and the year. Um, most definitely will be at NC Comic Con, but I'm hoping to go to Heroes Con and Ra Raleigh Supercon later this month and next month. Hopefully you guys will see me there, but just keep your fingers crossed. And, well, next I guess I'll go see Wonder Woman and I'll tell you how that is. Alright, bye!